Let's talk about PID control. Chances are you've interacted with something that uses a form of this control law, even if you weren't aware of it. And so it's worth learning a bit more about what this control law is actually doing and how it helps us. We start with example of self-balancing robot. Here we have an Arduino Uno microcontroller. Stepper motors. MPU6050, six axis gyro plus accelerometer sensor for tilt detection. Stepper driver and HC05 Bluetooth module. In self-balancing robot, we want the robot to stand on two wheels vertically upright. Let's call this vertically upright position the set point or zero degree position. This is what we call the system that we want to control. The input into this system is the motor speed and direction, and the output variable is the robot's angle of tilt. The basic idea of a control system is to figure out how to generate the appropriate actuated signal, the input, so that our system will produce the desired controlled output. And that's basically the job of the control engineer, produce the right input into the system to get the output that you want. And in feedback control, the output of the system is fed back into the system, hence the name, and compared to the set point to see how far off the system is from where we want it to be. This difference between the two is the error term. If the output was exactly what we commanded it to be, then the error would go to zero, and that is what we want, zero error. So the question is, how do we take this error term and convert it into suitable actuator commands so that over time the error is driven to zero? And the answer is with a controller. Now, let's say the desired angle of tilt is zero degrees, indicating an upright position. At the beginning, if the robot is tilted, let's say 10 degrees to the right, we have an error of 10 degrees. To balance the robot, we need to generate an appropriate actuated signal based on this error. Here, we can use a PID controller. The proportional part of the controller will multiply the error by a gain value to determine the motor speed. For example, if the proportional gain is set to 0.1, then the motor speed will be 1 degree per second at the start, and as we go closer to the set point, the error will reduce, and so will the speed. With a proportional controller, we start reducing the error quickly since we're far away, and then gradually slow down as we get closer and closer to our set point. This type of controller will eventually cause us to stop right on the goal line. If we wanted to adjust the amount of time it took us to get to the goal, we could increase or decrease the multiplier term. The integral part of the controller will integrate the error over time and sum it up. This helps in eliminating steady state error. The derivative part of the controller will measure the rate of change of the error and adjust the actuated signal accordingly. It helps in predicting future behavior and responding to changes in the error. These three components, the proportional, integral, and derivative paths, work together to generate the appropriate actuated signal that will gradually bring the robot back to an upright position. As the robot tilts less and less, the error decreases and the actuated signal is adjusted accordingly. Eventually, the robot will reach a balanced state with zero error and the actuated signal will stabilize at a value that maintains the upright position. The PID controller's ability to consider the present error, the past error through integration, and the prediction of future error through differentiation allows it to effectively balance the self-balancing robot. PID controllers are widely used in various control applications because of their simplicity and effectiveness in many scenarios. By tuning the gains of each component, Control engineers can customize the behavior of the controller to meet specific requirements. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.